disability illness can happen to anybody, like it happened to me. You know, a few years ago, I was rushing around with a heavy news camera, jumping in and out of satellite news gathering vans and um, directing live television programmes when I was back in the studio, having an exciting career. And I had to give it up because I developed this disease that was hidden, going on inside me and just developing slowly. It was really devastating to lose my job because of developing an illness and just having to take loads of painkillers just to get me through the day. So it came to the point where I just realised that I couldn't carry on with my job. About six months after I was diagnosed, I had to take early retirement. From the outside, you know, I'm perfectly healthy sitting here talking to you, but it's what's going on on the inside that matters, isn't it? You know. But the sad thing about the diagnosis was that I was told I had a degenerative illness, that there wasn't a cure, and there were no proper treatments for it even. Primary lateral cirrhosis is a really slowly developing form of motor neurone disease. It develops over years and decades rather than weeks and months like the more common type. So I'm actually really lucky in that sense. When I was diagnosed, it was actually a relief because I'd been taking so much time off work that I finally had a diagnosis that I could go back to work, see my manager and say, look, they've actually given this thing a name. I had no creative outlet. It was really, really awful. And you just feel like there's this massive hole in your life. Creativity had been um, my work. And I, and I didn't have that. So I started taking photographs. I could hardly walk, but I had to use a mobility scooter. And at the time, when I first started going out taking photographs, I had what I call an old man scooter. What I found was that it made me invisible. People didn't notice that I was taking their photographs. And actually, um, for, for a few weeks, I was playing a game where I would get as close as I possibly could to people to see when they actually noticed me taking photographs at different distances. And I literally would actually hold the camera up in front of somebody's face uh, to see whether they noticed me. And that was, it. That was more often than not the point where they, they recognised I was taking a photograph. I've been really lucky that my photography um, has opened the door for me having exhibition to this something that I would never have done if I hadn't developed most neuro disease. I use my photography to raise awareness and to raise funds for the Motor Neuro Disease Association and another charity called Movement for Hope. You know, one of my photographs sold for £2,000, raised £2,000 for the MND Association and um, I was absolutely overjoyed. £2,000 sold, thank you sir. Probably one of the highlights of my life. There was an amazing story behind one of the photographs in the exhibition I had locally. There was a lady called Rita Zarchi who had photographed on Dama High Street in Worcester. A couple of days after the exhibition opened, I, I got an email from the daughter and it turned out that she was overjoyed that there was this photograph of her mother at a moment in her life that um, her, her family wasn't aware of, just going about her not normal business. My photography has inadvertently brought a lot of happiness to other people and it's also brought happiness to me. I don't want my disability to define who I am, that's why I go out and take photographs. And I had to refine myself and, and kind of rebuild who I am. If you're disabled and you can find a way of communicating what your life is like through creativity then then do it you know I'm not saying my photographs really tell you deeply what my life is like but they do give a bit of a different perspective because they're taken from um, the perspective of somebody in a mobility scooter you don't know what's around the corner so make the most of your life